Welcome and learn everything important you need to know to tell if emerald is real or fake with simple tests. In this 20 minute tutorial I will show you synthetic emerald imitations, fakes compared to natural emeralds. You always take a closer look with a lot of important information. Very good and interesting examples of natural emeralds that we will examine together. More fakes, more natural green gems, a lot more fakes and a lot more green gems. Finally more natural emeralds. I will show you what you have to pay attention to and will explain it always with a closer look at some very good examples. More tips? Yes. Stay tuned. So, yeah, I really hope that this episode helps a lot of people and please don't forget to leave a like if you learned something or if you have fun on such little experiments, I planned some more episodes. Next time we uh, take a look at some rubies and some sapphires. Helpful, easy tests to help people with their gemstones. In general, you know this is a gem cutting channel and if you have fun in gemstones, gem testing, gem cutting, especially faceting, you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Just feel free to share it with your friends. So uh, they don't get scammed. Turn on future notifications if you don't want to miss a video or one of the next episodes about rubies and sapphires. Okay. Hi viewers and welcome to German Gem Cutter. Today I want to show you how to tell if emerald is real or fake with simple tests. Which means we take a closer look at typical fakes and natural specimens of emerald. What you see here is my selection for you of natural and fake emeralds and some other stones to show you also in a direct comparison what you have to pay attention to if you want to know if your stone is real or not. In this episode I work with Camellia oil. It has a refractive index of 1.47 to 1.48 but uh, you can also use every clear food oil. Oil has a higher refractive index than the air and gemstones also have higher refractive indexes. So we use this property, put the stones in oil to take a better and closer look inside the gemstones to search for inclusion, color zonings and much more. Okay, before we start, we need a better light. I'm using my light table with transmitted light. So we've become an, an super view inside the stone. Let's start with this example here and dip it in the oil. What we see is we have inclusions in this stone which is typical for emerald. Emeralds got a lot of inclusions called jardin. It's French and means garden. And we have a super beautiful, strong and intense color. When we put this stone in oil, you see we've become a much better view inside the stone. Often use this oil, we have tiny dirt particles here, but I hope it is okay. And what we see is this stone here has inclusions. We have a very strong, intense, homogenic color from the front and also from the back. Okay, now we'll check the stone from the side. See what happened. The stone is colorless. Why is the stone colorless? Because it is an assembled stone. You see, the crown is completely colorless and clear. The pavilion is colorless with some inclusion. Between the colorless clear crown and the colorless included pavilion, we have a layer of adhesive, green colored adhesive. You see, it is pretty easy in oil to identify such assembled stones if they use clear material and a colored layer of adhesive. Okay, what it is, often for the crown they use materials they want to imitate, which means it can be a clear piece of barrel. When you made a thermal test, it shows you barrel, but it is only an assembled stone. The color only reflects from these uh, colored, green colored layer here, and in the bottom, often they use quartz, quartz with inclusions, and you see 
if it is set in jewelry it is very hard to spot okay now we know this is not a real stone it is a perfect example for a typical fake of emerald here i have green gem with some cracks or inclusions and will not have a homogenic color in this piece we can see some color zoning so what do you think is it a good chance that this is a natural gemstone, a natural emerald or not. Let's check this stone in oil. We've got now a better view on all of these tiny little cracks and some bigger cracks. And what we see is, I hope that it is good to see on the camera. Yeah, not perfect, but I think you see it. You have to pay attention to a high concentration of color in these cracks here. It is not a real emerald. It is a dyed quartz. Well, we know that this quartz is dyed because we have a very intense green strong color only in these cracks in these bigger cracks and in these smaller cracks in asia they use these quartz material to fake jade and the rest of the world they try to sell this material as emerald this is a good example if you put such a stone in acetone the color will be washed out Next one, another emerald. And again, we have inclusions. And we have a wonderful color. Wonderful, intense green color. This stone looks very natural. But what it is? Let's check this. Okay, we have some reflections in these inclusions, which means there is a fluid inside them. This is a lab created emerald, which means it is a barrel, but it is a man made barrel. It is not a natural stone, it is a fake. On the first view, it looks like a natural gemstone. But as we see here, these strong, intense homogenic color also here is an indicator for a fake stone. These lab created emeralds have the same properties like the natural emeralds. So we concentrate on the color. And I will pick up the next stone, which is a natural emerald. Let's take a look at it. What we see is we have a nice color in this piece and we have inclusions. And the best indicator between lab created material and natural material is color zoning. Look, here we have a super homogenic color and here we see some color zoning. Here we have a sharp brighter stripe. I will show you some more examples with color zoning to show you what you have to look for. Look, the left piece here is from the SWAT area in Pakistan and this one is a Brazilian emerald, natural emerald. Look for such zonings. This is always a good indicator for a natural gemstone. Here you see all over the stone we have this homogenic intense color. I hope you see it good. The sharp color zoning here is a good example, but also such color zoning like this is always a very good indicator for a natural emerald. And now I will show you some more specimens of natural emerald. This is a good example. Yeah. Made a direct comparison with these fake emeralds. Also this one here. This intense piece here. A natural emerald you often have wide and dark inclusion. Not inclusions with such intense greens like this. It is not really good visible on the camera so I will show you some photos. In the center of this picture you see the dyed quartz with the intense green cracks. Our natural emeralds are all around the dyed quartz and what we see is the inclusions in the natural material looks more grayish green. But we also have some darker inclusions and it is very hard to see the difference between the natural material and the dyed quartz. Let's get a little bit closer. We can't see it very good because the color of the emerald shines through the inclusions 
due to the transmitted light. If you can't see the difference with the naked eye, remember the acetone. Wrap the stone in a paper tissue, soak them in acetone and place them in a small closed jar. Wait a few hours for the color of the fake stone dyed off on the paper tissue. Okay, let's go in on. This here is a top colored stone and also in such tiny pieces you see often color zonings and typical dark and white inclusions. Up to this point I only talk about white and black inclusions because I want to make this test as simple as possible to help people identifying their stones. Let's make a quick journey to the world of inclusions. There are a lot of different types of inclusions. When I talk from white inclusion, I mean little cracks, little cavities, they contain liquid, gas and solar lasers like crystals, minerals, and when I talk from black inclusions, it is because of this transmitted light. You see, they look in black. We also have uh, mineral inclusions like little needles, little crystals. I have a very good example of SWAT emerald with a mineral inclusion. Let's also check a close up of this specimen here. And what we see is we have here two beautiful mineral inclusions. They look like tiny crystals and that's also the possible inclusion. Different types of minerals in different types of crystals. Also some kind of fluid inclusions like this can look very dark, especially in transmitted light. Okay, let's go on. If you're really interested in inclusions, I can highly recommend Hyperion. It is a gemology inclusion search engine by Lotus Gemology. They have hundreds or thousands of photos of inclusions. They've made incredible photos with a microscope. You will find a lot of different types of inclusions. You can take a closer look at mineral inclusions, at little cavity, which contains liquids like water, gases, solid faces like crystals. A classical two-phase inclusion is a little cavity filled with some liquid in the gas bubble. If you have more than two phases, we talk from a multi-phase inclusion. All of this you can learn. And you see super cool examples of such inclusions at the Gemology inclusion search engine by Lotus Gemology. I don't want to make it too complicated here, so I talk from white and black inclusions, but if you're really interested in, take a closer look. The link you will find in the video description down below. It is really highly recommended. We are now, now a little bit better to tell the difference between synthetic materials like this one, fakes out of quartz, assembled gemstones. If your stone have color zonings, if your stone have inclusions, it is not easy to say it is really an emerald because we have some more possibilities. I don't want to show you all other natural green gemstones because this is too much. I have some uh, pieces here which you see very often where people think oh it's a green stone must be an emerald but uh, this piece here ah, we have some bubbles on the stone they are not in it you have to make sure that all bubbles are gone because uh, you can look that they are in your stone. And what you see here is a green stone which looks more like a tourmaline. But uh, let's take a closer look at this one. The first thing we see is there's a bubble inside. Such bubble inclusions are a very good indicator for glass. And these curved lines here. See these curved lines are always a big indicator that it is glass and this stone is glass. Tourmaline can often be identified by his typical green color. It is more a yellowish green or a bluish green. And what we have here is a more yellowish green tourmaline, natural tourmaline in this case. Here is another piece, another green gemstone, another one, another one. Let's check what we see here. This stone here is 
a natural tourmaline. You see we have very sharp color zonings and we have straight zoning. The color these straight zoning here and an inclusion, a needle inclusion here is the indicator for a natural tourmaline. Also this piece here. We have inclusions, we have color zoning. Here again, color zoning in this piece, not so sharp as in this piece. Some different zones, especially we have uh, some brighter zones here and here and some darker zones here and here. And also we have some tiny inclusions in it. We know that this is tourmaline because of the color. This is not a typical emerald color. But what is this? Look at this. There's an intense yellowish green gemstone. And what we see here is an X. Do you see this X? It is also an indicator. You see here very bright. It's going darker because the stone is going deeper here. And also we see a homogenic color. No color zoning, no inclusions. This is not a natural gemstone. We'll show you some more natural emeralds. Okay, let's take a look. And here you see, at first we have another color. These four pieces are all natural emeralds and you see also in such tiny pieces we have color zonings, which we can see much better on the photo here. And again, needle inclusions, also very good to see on the photo here mineral needle inclusions, little wide inclusions, which means we have cavities. And here on this photo, we see a wonderful example of a cavity. The difference in color can be seen very good between these four natural emeralds and these three natural tourmalines here. Well, are there more tips? Yes. Let's take a closer look at these specimens here. On the right hand side, you see the faked stones and on the left hand side you see the natural stones and some rough specimens of natural emerald. Let's take a closer look at the left side. Here you see this specimen, very good color, also this one and this one, not top color but very good color. Top colors are very expensive, also clean materials are very expensive, such Small stones are also not cheap. You see all these fakes here, without this one here. All these faked emeralds here show us the most expensive color of emeralds. A super intense bluish green typical emerald top color. It is super often that uh, faked stones should imitate the top qualities of a gemstone, of a natural gemstone, which means often high clarity and super intense colors. If you have such stones, be critical, because stones and especially emeralds with a super color and clear like these pieces can yeah. cost very fast a lot more than $10,000. And as a gem cutter, I have another tip for you. Take a closer look at the shape. You see, all of these stones have a good commercial shape. Very often you have them in standard sizes and you have good symmetric cuts. That's another indicator if you have a clear stone in best color with a symmetric cut. Be critical. Uh, what I want to show you is the shape of the stone. Look, for me as a gem cut, it is not a perfect shape, but uh, let's try to see it with normal eyes, not with the eyes of a gem cut. The shape is good. We have a good symmetry and often you have when they are natural very strange shape especially such tiny pieces here are cutted on size and they try to get the best out of so it you have really strange shapes look these drop here is extreme flat you see they cut it out of a very thin. crystal or piece of natural emerald it is very flat way too flat and here the symmetry is good see not too flat Okay, let's take a look at some square cuts, some emerald cuts, square emeralds. And also here on this example you see we have a good symmetry. Look, this one here has a very 
thick little outline. You can take a look at facetdiagram.org and there you will find a lot of fasting diagrams. I would recommend that you take a closer look at some commercial cuts, at the designer cuts, get a feeling for the right symmetry, for the right proportions of a gemstone. And here you see in the light reflection, look, the girdle outline of this stone is about a third of the complete thickness of the stone, which means it is much too big. It is because they cut them on weight and often you have some odd crystals like this here. So take a look at this one. We have no crown on this piece. It is just a table facet and a super big pavilion. Often you will find strange shapes like this. And this is also and always a good indicator that you have a natural stone. Often they are not in calibrated sizes because they try to cut it on to weight. Get a maximum amount. Often the the crystals have odd shapes, big inclusions, cracks, splittings. In case of the synthetic materials, they have enough material. They not have to look at color zonings. They not have to look to inclusions only when they want to have inclusions in their fakes, like here on these emeralds. They often have same sizes, the best properties of a material and a relatively good shape for a commercial cut. You will find a link to the database of the fasting diagram also down in the description box below. Don't forget to check out the Hyperion Gemology Inclusion Search Engine. Lotus Gemology is really worth to take a closer look at some inclusions. With some type of inclusions, you can also find out the origin of a gemstone. It is also possible always take a closer look at the inclusion. Take a look that you find color zoning. Look that the stone is. Yeah imperfect. You see they are very creative and also try to use materials with inclusions to scam people. Yeah, I really hope that this episode helps a lot of people. So please share it with your friends. It helps my channel a lot. And please don't forget to leave a like if you learned something or if you have fun on such little experiments. I planned some more episodes. Next time we uh, take a look at some rubies and some sapphires. Helpful, easy tests to help people with their gemstones. And in general, you know, this is a gem cutting channel. And if you have fun in gemstones, gem testing, gem cutting, especially faceting, you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Feel free to share it with your friends so uh, they don't get scammed. Turn on future notifications if you don't want to miss a video or one of the next episodes about rubies and sapphires. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope we see us in the next video. Have a nice week. Bye bye.